Uh, as we are continuing in our study on uh, the Ten Words or Ten Commandments, uh, we're coming uh, to the one uh, that is uh, maybe misunderstood most, uh, the Third Commandment, um, regarding uh, the matter of, uh, pardon me, the Second Commandment, regarding avoiding slander. Uh, the word blasphemy is the word slander. When we apply slander to God, it's called blasphemy. And so we want to understand uh, the value of this of vital command for our lives. As we consider this command, I want us to understand some values of our community. Uh, we talk often of uh, Kedush Hashem, sanctification of the name, sanctification of God's name. Uh, we want to understand that we live to sanctify his name. This is what our Messiah taught us when he taught us how to pray. First thing he said, uh, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, sanctified be your name. So everything about our life is meant to bring honor to that name. We live to demonstrate his faithfulness to Israel and the nations. Uh, the glorification of his name is everything to us as a community. And because we're created in the image of God, as we learn to honor his name, we will learn how to respect other people. The disrespect for other people reflects our disrespect initially with God. As we take a look at the scriptures for our study for this morning, the basic scripture, I'd like you to join me as we pray over it. Uh, you'll be sitting for a while. Please stand if you're able to. Let's read the scripture, uh, and it's uh, the two scriptures, two verses there in its entirety. Remember, verse 2 is the context for the Ten Commandments. You need to understand each commandment in its proper context to appreciate the point the scripture is making for our lives. Let's read the whole thing. Here we go. I am Hashem your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of a house of slavery, you shall not take the name of Hashem your God in vain, for Hashem will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Avinu, our Father, we are awed by your word. Holy is your name. May you be sanctified. May you be honored and exalted. May that name which is above every name be lifted up and may it be honored in our hearts and in our words and through our life. Guide us that we may grow into the truth of this matter. In Yeshua's name, amen. As we consider this portion, please be seated. I want you to know this verse 7 has two parts to it. Uh, this is going to sound ridiculously nerdy. If you're a visitor here, you'll probably think, is he like this all the time? Well, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, the first part of verse 7 is the uh, second person singular, you, talking to you. But then the second part of that verse is the third person singular, for Hashem will not leave him in vain. You say, why is it change pronouns that way? Because the first part is direct application, but don't feel too guilty. It's a general principle. That's the part, that second part of the verse. Deals with the general principle, not only how he's going to treat you, but how he generally deals with the subject at hand. Now, as we get into it, let's understand what we're talking about. We're dealing with God's name. Uh, when we deal with the name, now some of us, you know, I... Uh, by the grace of God, I've got uh, one, uh, one wonderful grandson and a second one on the way. Uh, and when they gave him a name, my son, in naming him, uh, gave a drash on the name Shaul in the Bible. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there was value to the name. Uh, it didn't have to do merely with its 
uh, whether it sounded nice, had to do with the value behind it. Well, when we deal with the name of God, it's even more so. What he has revealed in the scripture about his name is what he wants us to know about his character, about his qualities, about his nature. Uh, his reputation is in his name. And so we want to, pre by the way, so is yours. I want you to think about that for just a second. When people hear your name, do their stomachs turn? <laughs> or do they say, what a great guy. What does your name characterize for others? Or what does God's name from our lips characterize to others as well? So as we consider the very fact here, being in the singular, whether it's for, uh, second person or third person, singular, uh, it's in the singular because every single one of us, every child of God, everyone who's trusted in the redemption, the salvation that's in the Messiah of Israel, Savior of the world as such, every single one of us is personally responsible to honor the Redeemer's name in our thoughts, that means what you think about. With your words and with your deeds as well. Uh, it shall all be honoring to him. So whether it's vice or virtue, uh, in your thoughts, words, and deeds, all of that will be revealed, uh, either how you honor his name or otherwise. It will be showing whether or not you're the redeemed or you're unredeemed or areas for growth in the life of of the redeemed. There may be situations that you have not applied the truth of God to your life and you get into those knee-jerk situations when you have a knee-jerk reaction and what comes out, may, those are areas to talk to God about. So as we want to understand that being a name dropper, and in the Bible of course there's many names, God, there's one God with many names as it turns out, uh, Adonai, uh, we use that, it means master, Lord, it's translated Lord, El Shaddai, God Almighty, Elohim, God, uh, Hashem, we use Hashem uh, for the, the covenantal name of God. You'll notice in some places they translate it Jehovah or Yahweh. We don't use those words here because in English, uh, in, in Hebrew, uh, in extant Hebrew, uh, there is no J sound. There's no J uh, in Hebrew, so it couldn't be Jehovah. And there's no, in, in, the, in, the, in Hebrew, what we know of Hebrew, there's no W sound, and so it couldn't be Yahweh. And so both, we don't use either of those names. We use Hashem, which means the name, reflecting upon the covenant name of God, the yud heh vav -Hey. Now, that being said, there's all variations in the scriptures. Many of you are familiar with these kind of things. But then again, when God came in the flesh, the prophecies regarding the Messiah, uh, Ben Elohim, the Son of God, God coming in the flesh, uh, we see all sorts of other names attached to him. Goel, our, our Redeemer. Uh, Emmanuel, God with us. Peleoates, wonderful counselor. El Gibor, mighty God. Uh, Aviad, Eternal Father, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace, and on and on and on. And so there are many names in the scriptures, even as we had in our call to worship uh, from Proverbs. Uh, do you know his name and his son's name? Well, now we do. And so when we think about all these matters, we want to remember uh, God is so wonderful. There's so many facets to his wonderfulness. Uh, therefore, there's so much to say about him. And that's why uh, we, we have these various names in Scripture. Uh, but when we look at the fact that there's only one true God, we want to remember the new covenant reinforces the truth there's only one God. And therefore, it's the name. Uh, go, therefore, make Tamadim disciples of all nations, immersing them in the name, singular, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Singular, one God, therefore, the name. Keep that in mind as we study the Word of God. I say that because the name of Yeshua is to be revered as the name of Hashem. Uh, we, see, we understand Him as God come in the flesh. And so we want to appreciate uh, that His name is to be honored, 
uh, and there is no other name given uh, to men by which we may be saved, as we see here. And so you say, well, I'm going to be saved in the name of Adonai, Mazel Tov. The problem is that it is in Yeshua's name we have salvation. His name means salvation, actually. And so the scripture says the name of Messiah Yeshua, there's salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that's been given among men by which we must be saved. And so we want to understand why we proclaim that name. In him is salvation. And so as we consider the matter about revering the name of God, we'll want to understand about applying it to the name Yeshua. So every time we see Hashem or Adonai, uh, please understand there's only one God. We're not trying to uh, uh, confuse anyone on the subject. And so you'll notice scriptures that regard this matter. If you confess with your mouth, Yeshua who Adon, Yeshua is Lord. Uh, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for everyone. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So the scriptures identify him as our Lord, etc. And so uh, we see this throughout the word of God. We actually said some of these verses in our call to worship as well. And so how do we properly honor the name of the one who loves us with an everlasting love? Uh, we're going to see that in the text, there are three words that are used that form both an outline and application for our lives. As you properly understand the text itself, uh, this may seem strange to people who are not accustomed to uh, the kind of teaching we do at Hope of Israel. We take the text and realize that in the text is the truth. What I'm telling you is only true if it reflects what the Bible is actually saying. And if it's not, I know some of you will talk to me afterwards. I'm, I'm looking at you, Tim. I'm expecting that from you. But nonetheless, understand the text is the truth. And we therefore want to understand what it's saying to apply the truth to our lives. So we'll see three words. Take will be the first point. Vain, second. Unpunished, third. And so as we now consider the outline that's in your bulletin, uh, the first word, take, uh, has to do with uh, expressing, so the external respect for his sacred reputation. And then internally, we'll take a look at the word vain and what it refers to, our internal respect for his scriptural revelation, like who he is. And then eternally, the whole issue of retribution, our eternal respect for sworn retribution, the very issue of what happens if you say doesn't matter. And so, uh, you say, well, what do you mean? What you sow is what you reap. Do you believe that? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> believe it or not, it's true. Judgment is fair. The fact I'm going to heaven is unfair. I know what I deserve. But Messiah took my judgment. That's the grace of God. And so we want to understand judgment's fair. So we look at the issues of retribution. We want to understand the fairness of these matters. Moving right ahead, starting at the top, working our way right through it here. The word take there, it says you shall not take the name of, the, of Hashem, the Lord, in some of your translations. Our external respect is being say, spoken of here. The word actually, nasa means to lift up. To lift up, to carry uh, to raise up, even to exalt. It's used in various ways uh, in the scriptures. And so it has to do with lifting up that name, expressing that name, communicating that name. And so the first thing we want to talk about is our external communication, what we say about that name. And so how you refer to him refers to you. Created in his image is actually an outworking of your life. You say, what are you talking about? Creating this image, we're created to represent him. We are created to live him out. And so what you say about him is actually an understanding, not merely what you think of him, but being created in his image, how poorly you may think of yourself. And that you may not appreciate that you're created in his image. 
So understand, creating this image, uh, that and Yeshua taught us that the heart overflows into speech. Uh, so God's heart for you is revealed by his living word. So your heart for God is actually revealed in every word, every word you speak about every day. You say, well, that seems a bit much. Yeah, I know. I understand. That's the problem of having a holy God and not being a holy people. Everything about God seems a bit much. This has to do with maturing and growing into him. As we now understand some of the matters, let's take a look at some of the issues that arise from this. Uh, the unredeemed, those who don't know the Lord, uh, they ruin his reputation. You say, well, what do you mean? Uh, when they curse his name, or when they do cursing in his name, or whatever it may be. All of that is a horrible sin. Uh, and by the way, for those who use his name mindlessly, thoughtlessly, I just want to let you know his first name is not Oh My, uh, even though it may be an exclamation that you bring out every time you're surprised by anything. And so you say, well, I didn't mean anything by it. That's the point the scripture is bringing up, is that we use his name thoughtlessly. We use it without honor. We are therefore desecrating a name that we should be consecrating. We should be honoring intentionally his name, as opposed to unintentionally desecrating his name. You say, does it matter? Depends how you want me to speak about you in public. We'll see if it matters. You may find out that you actually care about how you're spoken of. You know, what did he say about me? What does it matter? Well, it may matter. It certainly matters to God. And so, we're not to swear falsely in his name, etc., uh, all of this. Now, I grew up in Orthodox Judaism where we did not mention his name. Uh, his name was not mentioned. Uh, and that developed in order not to take his name in vain. But that doesn't help, and that's not the point of Scripture. Because it's your attitude that God is looking for. What you say is merely the outworking of your attitude. And so God hears your thoughts. He knows what's going on. And we want to appreciate that matter for our lives. And so the redeemed, we represent his reputation. Hashem, our God. What in the world do we mean by that? Created in his image, we're created for two aspects. You remember, it says in, the, in Genesis, uh, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Likeness is similarity. That's how you relate to one another. What you have similarly. I think you guys are partners. There are things you have in common. You can relate to each other regarding that matter. Uh, and so we want to understand the similarities between you and God. As you mature in him, there are more similarities. And you relate to him more fully. And as you relate to him more fully, you'll represent him more effectively. Where you relate to him is what's going to be seen in how you represent him. And so let's understand the very issue of our creation, the purpose of our existence here. Uh, the problem now with sin, all the selfishness of our life, that has us misrepresent him. Because where you are not living for him, where is sin in your life, you're not relating to him, obviously. You're not abiding in him. You're not trusting in him. You're not looking unto him as you run the race. Your eyes are off of him. And that's going to be seen in some misrepresentation where you don't relate to him. And so the evidence of our redemption let me ask you a question. Fill in the blank. Faith without works is... What's this? This side of the room was just waiting to hear the right answer. <laughs> we'll be praying for that side of the room, just saying we expected a bit more. Just, you know. But nonetheless, understand real faith shows itself. Real faith is what, how you live your life. That, faith is how you live. Faith is intentional how you live.
And so, uh, as you develop good habits, then you have good habits expressing faithfulness. And so the evidence of our redemption is expressed in our exaltation of his name. Uh, that's how you express that you're one of his. And so our honor of him is our honesty about him. Uh, or you being dishonest and misrepresenting. You say, well, sometimes I just don't think about him. I mean, come on, you got to live a real life. Depends what you think of as a real life. You may be living an unreal life, a mirage, a fantasy that you call reality. The real life was lived out fully in the Messiah. We follow him. That's a real life for your family, for your children, and for yourselves. And so we want to understand the name uh, Hashem or Jua represents his covenantal name. Hashem means his covenantal name. Let's understand what we're talking about here. We represent his covenant faithfulness. See, he is faithful. God keeps his word. He keeps his promises. You can trust in him. And therefore, his redeemed live out his faithfulness. That's why there's messianic congregations. You say, I thought it was just, we, had, we didn't like cartoons on Saturday morning. Isn't that why we get together? We don't like, we're the anti-cartoon group, aren't we? No, that's, no, I don't think, if that's the reason you join, we have something to talk about. But no, no, it's because we demonstrate his faithfulness to his promises to Israel and therefore then to the nations. If he's unfaithful to Israel, the nations ain't got a shot. So we want to understand, we represent his faithfulness wherever we go. Don't leave home without him. Uh, what do you mean? You see this wedding ring? Yeah, it doesn't look very expensive. That's not the point. It represents something wonderful beyond price. It represents my marriage to the most wonderful woman in the whole wide world, my wife, Miriam, wherever she may be at this particular There she is over there. It represents my marriage covenant wherever I go. Wherever I go, this represents my relationship, my covenant relationship with my wife. Understand, we live out the same thing with our lives. His covenant faithfulness. We live out that matter in relationship to the living God. Otherwise, you may want to look at those areas of your life. Now, be very careful. If you're a visitor with us, this will sound stranger to you than what I already said. You want to be very careful about guilt. You don't grow through guilt. Guilt stops you from growing in the Lord. You grow from the grace of God. And the areas of your life that the Holy Spirit is surfacing, areas where you took his name lightly, or where you use his name in some other dishonoring way, don't give in to guilt. Bring it to the Lord. Just talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I blew it. I messed up at that point. I didn't, I was just mindless and thoughtless. Uh, I was just fearful. I was angry or I was stressed out or whatever it may be. Talk to him about it. You'll then be forgiven in the, the atonement of Messiah. You'll be cleansed. And yes, help me now to grow in those areas to honor you. Don't give in to guilt. Guilt will keep you from growing. It's like a hot fire. And you put your hand near a hot fire. What you do is you withdraw it. You take it back because you don't want to be burned. So when you feel guilt, you will not embrace the matter. You'll remove yourself from it, and you won't grow. You'll reinforce your problems. Be careful of guilt. We already have a guilt offering, and that's more than enough for you. And so we want to understand as well, he is your God. I want you to say to someone next to you, he is my God. Say that to someone next to you. He really is. I want you to understand the importance of those words. Still in the singing, he is your God. He's not only our God. Quite often uh, in Judaism, we say we talk in our, us, we. But here we see a very clear instance where we are to personally identify with him. 
He loves you. He is your God. Your God. See what the words say. Your God. He is your God. Just like she is your wife. He is your husband. Understand the importance of these words, this personal relationship, not only covenantal faithfulness, but the very truth of a relationship we have with him. And therefore, every time we speak of him, are we reflecting the loving, wonderful, glorious relationship we have? Or do you make jokes about your spouse when your spouse is not around? Do you throw her or him under the bus? Because they're not here and you make a joke about them, you complain about them, or whatever it might be. Well, then we can only understand how important a relationship is to you. Be wise, for this relationship is important to God. Do you think God, <laughs> do you think God is particularly honored that you're his child? Yes, he's thrilled to death. The death of our Messiah expressed his desperate love for you. He desperately cares about you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He hasn't moved off of that a bit. He's still crazy about you. He still cares about you in every area of your life. Even though you may have, don't, you don't even think about it. He can't stop thinking about you. Everything is about his love for you, Messiah, his love gift, the eternal love you've received, the grace of God. All of this is to reveal the fact of his great love for you. And therefore, that question has to be, be posed. Does it honor you to have him as your God? See, it honors him because of the grace of God. Do you understand what it means to be a child of God. There's no greater or more glorious title for anyone than child of God. And such we are. And he loves us in that way. And so we want to understand that when we express his name, we are actually talking about our relationship with him or not. Understand his name. His name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They are saved. His name is the refuge of our people. In his name is our salvation. In his name is our hope. His name that's above every other name. And so understand the importance of what this is talking about. External respect for him. And so we honor him in our worship. I want you to pray about honoring him in your worship. You know, every week as a community... Some of us individually in the mornings, we also say the Shema and the Vahafta. But every week as a community, we say the Vahafta, Vahafta et Adonai Lehecha, you know, to love the Lord our God. And then we say with all our heart, all our soul, all our might, all we got going for us, all we have to love him with all of that. Is this an expression of genuine devotion or is it just something you mindlessly say? Because that's false worship. Saying prayers that are not reflections of your heart is false worship. Be careful of falling into the habit of false worship. Be intentional. Faith is intentional until it develops in such good habits that you're on your game. You're focused on honoring him. And so Yeshua said, anything you ask in my name, I will do. Isn't that glorious? How many believe he was telling the truth? Raise your hand. Either hand will do. We are that kind of community. Okay. He said, anything you ask in my name, I will do. I would want to say to you, if you will honor his name, he will answer your prayers. But if you dishonor his name, he, why should he take those prayers seriously? Just tacking on his name at the end of a prayer when you don't really give your heart to him? When you're not thinking about him and loving him? You think he is fooled by that? 
You think he said, oh no, did Sam say, Beshem Yeshua, I'm stuck. Now I got to answer that prayer. Oh my goodness, man, if only he hadn't said Beshem Yeshua, but that's the magical name. We're not talking about incantations. We're talking about a relationship, honoring his name. And therefore he's delighted to answer prayers where his name is honored in our life. And his house should be a house of prayer for all people. In our witness as well. You say, what do you mean? Redeeming your words about him so your words can be redemptive for him. If your words will honor him, they will then be effective instruments of his grace. But if you dishonor him, how will your words be anything but things that fall to the ground? Are you trying to have a witness apart from honoring his presence? Do we gather in his name here? You know, Yeshua said, uh, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of them. You believe that? Now, let me, uh, you may not have thought about it in like, do I really believe it? Do I really have to believe it? Yeah. Yeah. He said, what difference does it make? That's right. What difference does it make? Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. Where his name is honored, you're enjoying true fellowship. That's the witness. But at home, if you kind of forget about him, he's only a Shabbat morning kind of thing, understand the lack of fellowship you enjoy at home or when you're in with other people, the lack of genuine edification there is with others because his name is not honored. But where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. And so understand the importance of our witness, of your home as a witness. When people come to your home, your home is a witness when he's in, in the midst of you. And therefore understand the calling that we share together. Our fellowship in his name is no more effective than the honor we give his name. In regards to our walk. As we live for him at work, at home, when you're with friends, whatever you're going to be doing for the rest of this weekend, uh, every lie profanes his name. Every lie profanes his name. Why? Because he is the truth. No lie is of the truth. Does your name, does, uh, when, when you deal with entertainment, does it honor him or dishonor him? Think about that. The music that you are entertained by, does it honor him or dishonor him? Now, this may be a prayer area for you. Just write it down and pray over these things. You don't go into guilt. That's not going to be helpful. But it's an area for growth as we grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. And so what you see, have before your eyes, does it honor his name? Or is it basically doesn't matter? Well, understand what you're saying that it doesn't matter to you it doesn't mean it doesn't matter <laughs> it may actually matter god thinks it matters and so when you think about putting a mezuzah if you've ever seen them on our doorways we put them upon our homes a little portion of the torah is inside so every time we enter our home or leave our home, we remember that our home is a place where his name is honored. And in our homes, we therefore have to forgive in his name. We therefore have to honor his name. We have to care about the things he cares about in his name. As we practice the very presence of the living God, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you believe that? I bet that's your hope. I bet that's actually your hope, that he'll never leave you or forsake you. You know, gee, I sure hope you're going to be with me on this drive. I sure hope you'll be with me when I go to work. I sure hope you'll be with me. Well, guess what? He is. Yeah, he is. Uh, but understand the responsibility from our side of it, to honor his name, to practice the very presence of God, that he's in the room. He is with us now and forever. Now, I learned this the hard way. I learned this when I was 10 days old in the Lord. 10 days old in the Lord. I had just come to faith in Messiah. Still had my crazy big Jufro. As you see, I traded it in. But nonetheless, 
So there I am, new believer, and I go down to Sausalito to go share the good news with some folks. Very excited to share Messiah with them. I just saved it about 10 days. Yeah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the synapses still weren't connecting, to tell you the truth there. And so I'm there sharing. I'm talking to a guy, and he is, you know, as we say, cursing like a sailor. Well, 11 days before, that's how I talked all the time. I knew how to do that. I was actually pretty good at that, to tell you the truth. And so he, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so I said, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he stops, he looks at me. And he says, I know why I talk that way, but why do you talk that way? <laughs> like a knife to my heart. <laughs> Ten days the Lord. I repented publicly. Oh, Lord! <laughs> what? <laughs> After 10 days, the Lord will give, you, will, will give you some slack too. But if you're 11 days in the Lord... <laughs> so understand, we grow slowly, but we must grow. We must honor Him. Why not? Why would you want to dishonor Him? You say, well, it's, I just don't think about it. Ah, taking every thought captive to his lordship. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Understand, let's grow in this area. Let's understand we're not perfect, but we're being perfected as we take these things seriously and honor him in our life. Getting to the, that was the longest point, so you can all breathe a sigh of relief. But point number two, our respect for a scriptural revelation. You shall not take the name of Hashem in vain. You shall not take his name in vain. He repeats it twice in this regard, in this verse. The word shav in the Hebrew has to do with emptiness. Nothing is. Like, I didn't mean... Did you ever say, I didn't mean anything by it? That's the definition of vanity, of using his name in vain. I didn't mean anything by it. That's exactly what it means. I didn't mean anything by that. That's the problem, not the solution. Understand, where it means useless. Throw it around. See, the idols, the same words used for the idols. False worship idols. Uh, they mean emptiness. The idols are nothing. Don't treat his name like nothing. Don't treat his name like emptiness. Don't treat it in vain. And so what do you, what do you mean? Well, the, the, the slander ender, empties his name of value. People hear you talk like that. What will they think of your opinion of your God? And so you, you say, well, I'm with other believers. Well, you want to bring it down to as low as possible standard you can, don't you? Or do you want to be edifying? Honoring the Lord in all your ways. Understand his life, who he is, and the life he brings to us is so important. But I have found that people who are self-centered, people who are self-centered, all about themselves, people who are vain, take his name in vain. It's all about them. It doesn't have to do with his honor. It has to do with them. Kind of a narcissistic tendency. You know, it has to do with me. You know, if, I, if it's just a joke, Oh, I can take his name in vain if it's a joke. I can take his name in vain uh, if it's... Cut. The joke's on you. It just reveals your own vanity. And so the desecration of his name, Kalul Hashem, understand the desecration of his name when he's unredeemed, the unredeemed reject his biblical revelation. Out of this, this command comes the profaning of his name. The word profaning his name means take, using it commonly. Using it just you know, as a word. Like when you say OMG or things like that. Uh, just like that. Or oh, weak vows. You say, a weak vow? What is that? I'm going to say what, what it sounds like. You ready? As God is my witness, that's the best movie I ever saw. As God is your witness, a weak vow when you make those kind of vows. Be careful of using his name 
just because you're making a point, just because it's the best restaurant you've ever ate at, and disgracing his name, using his name emptily in weak vows, swearing dirty words and all of those kinds, all of these things, all that you say, well, that's just words. I know you don't mean anything by it. That's the sin, the vanity, empty-mindedness, the thoughtlessness, lack of mindfulness, lack of focus, lack of intentionality. This is where we get caught. You know, we think that, well, if I don't mean anything, but no, no, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. No, I'm trying to bring us up to understand as a community and as our families how we are to be a witness for the living God because he's called us to live a holy life to the glory of his name. And so we want to understand how these things happen. You know, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Therefore, whatever comes from his lips may be some ceremonial thing, but there's still no God. And so we want to understand together that the redeemed revere the blessed revelation of who he is. We live to, you know, make a Kiddush Hashem to sanctify his name, for the consecration of his name, that his name may be set, may life, may my life, my meager, frail, fragile, saved by grace life, may it bring honor to his name. Nothing else. My life means nothing else than that. May my love for my wife bring honor to his name. May my care and concern for the members of this community, bring honor to his name. Nothing else matters. And so this begins in our heart. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. The problem is in the heart. It says in, in the scriptures, 1 Peter 3, 15, sanctify Messiah as Lord in your hearts. All oh, that'll make you ready. In your heart, that's where it has to be. Not just with your words. But in your heart, remember, first, relating to God that you might represent God. In his likeness that we might represent him, the image of God. And so in your heart, this is where our commitments are. We are defined by our commitments. We're defined by our values, by our priorities. This is what defines us as the people of God. Is your heart consecrated to the living God? The, the redeemed are blessed in his name. And by the, at the end of the service, David will be blessing us in the name of the Lord. Uh, this is what we do every week. Uh, so you shall put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. And so David will do so. We bless in his name. I trust fathers, you're blessing your children in his name and therefore honoring his name in your home. That you're praying over your kids, the blessed name of the Lord and honoring his name in your home. And then we bless his name. I love to worship. I'm almost sorry I have to get up here to speak, uh, but, you know, got to do everything. But worshiping, sing to Hashem, sing to the Lord, bless his name, bless his name, proclaim good tidings of his salvation. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your family about it. Let him be uppermost. You say, well, it makes me feel awkward. You know, I, Kind of like a little bit like, I'm going to be that guy, you know? Oh, here comes Sam. Guess who he's going to talk about? Oh, may that only be my reputation. May that only be my reputation. But that's the problem. Because we're not used to it, we feel awkward. We allow the awkwardness to keep us from honoring him. We actually feel more comfortable dishonoring him because we don't notice it. It's habitual. It just kind of happens. We're kind of used to that. Get used to honoring him. Be intentional about being an honor to his name in the life that we live and bless his name. And therefore, we confess his name. Uh, so we read in our call to worship, uh, that if they confess your name and pray, therefore, there is going to be forgiveness extended. So also confessing Yeshua as Lord. We confess his name. Also, we proclaim his name. And for those who are live streaming, I don't know where you are in the world, but we want the whole world to know the hope of salvation is in the Messiah of Israel. Uh, understand that in him there is hope and new life for all people. And so we proclaim his name. And we want to share that there's forgiveness 
uh, in his name. God has done everything for us, B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of our Messiah. And so it's not because the redeemed are not better people. No, we're all, let me, let me show you, we're all confessed sinners. How many people recognized that by their own works you would be in hell? Raise your hand. Take a look around. You thought you're the only one. No, no. All of us are only saved by grace through faith in the Messiah. And so understand we're not even better. No one's better. God's better. We're all cut from the same bolt of cloth. You know, it's not that we're better people, that's why we talk that way. No! It's because we understand what he has done for us. We understand what he has done. He redeemed us by grace through the blood of Yeshua as we trusted in him, our Passover lamb. This says we sang as well to his honor and glory. Finally, before we close in prayer, it says there, for Hashem will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. The word unpunished there, Naka, to be cleared, to be acquitted, to be cleansed, to be said, oh, he's innocent. Uh, it's used to be free from an oath, no longer held responsible for your oath. That's how it's used. So what does it mean here? The fact that you not leave him unpunished, it means he will not let him get away with it. You will not get away with it. You will not get away with it. You say, hold a second, I use his name in vain like 50 times a day. You mean I'm not going to get away? I've been getting away with it for years. What are you talking about? God is giving you time to repent because he loves you. Because he loves you. But each time it's offensive to him. And so we might think it's trivial. God thinks it's tragic. The unreceived, the, un the, the unredeemed, therefore, receive the retribution. You say, what? The only way to be forgiven is through the atonement God made for you in the Messiah. Otherwise, you get the fairness of judgment. Judgment is fair. What you sow, you reap. That's fair. What you sow, you reap. But Yeshua took your judgment. This is the love of God. He took your place that the judgment would be on him. Otherwise, if you don't trust in him, the Bible likens this, what seems trivial to so many people, like murder and child sacrifice and sexual perversion. All of this has to do with perverting his name. It's the same category. Why? Because he is a great and a mighty God and worthy of praise. He is worthy of honor. And when he's treated in an unworthy fashion, it's not that he hates you, he loves you. But your sin will find you out. Your sin will bring judgment. God doesn't want you to die in judgment. That's why Messiah came. And so just because it's insignificant to you doesn't mean it's insignificant at all. And so this is what the scriptures say. Uh, and you say, well, I was being sincere. Be careful. Be obedient. It's safer ground than sincerity because the heart is unspeakably wicked beyond all understanding. And so in the New Covenant, it talks about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what is that about? That it's called an unforgivable sin because what you're doing in doing that is rather than the name of Yeshua being life to you, you are rejecting that it was the work of God in Yeshua. You've looked at the life of Yeshua, and you're saying, nah, he was a bum. Forget about it, he was a loser. He was just a, a no good false teacher. So that is the sin of the blasphemy, the slander of the Holy Spirit, is that you're looking at the life and you're denying the work of the Holy Spirit. You're saying it's the unholy spirit at work in him. Therefore, by denying the God's work in the Messiah, there is no thing left for you. There's no place else for you to turn. And so you have to stop blaspheming, slandering that name, that name that should be honored. And therefore, we want to understand together that rejecting that name is rejecting the only hope that we have this time. Yeah, I was reading that there was a Chinese vase that was worth $75 million US. I'm so glad I was nowhere near it. 
I can't think of a vase I haven't broken. You say, well, I'm like the klutziest person. I'm the bull in the, in the china shop. I don't know it's a china shop. I can only imagine. I, then I would probably stupidly say, you know, oops, I'll give you a buck. <laughs> the person looks at me, it's worth $75 million. Well, not to me. <laughs> to me, it's worth like a dollar. So I treat it like a dollar. So I'll give you a dollar. It doesn't matter what it means to me. The value isn't determined by what it means to me. It has to do with the intrinsic value itself. And his name is worthy of praise and honor. His name is worthy of glory and exaltation. His name is worthy. And so understand the value and why the retribution is the way it is. Because you're devaluing it, bringing it down to what you think it's worth. And his name is, if a Ming vase is worth so much, how much more God himself would place upon his name? How much more should we do as well? And so the redeemed rely on his justifying redemption. You say, well, what do you mean? We realize the problem. That's the only thing. The only thing is we realize there's judgment. We realize there's going to be judgment. We realize it for what it is. Praise God we do. Praise God we do. Because we realize that there will be retribution. That what you sow, you will reap. We understand this matter. And therefore we realize and come to Yeshua. We throw ourselves on his mercy. For the judgment of God he took upon himself. That we might actually have forgiveness. And so now we live with a new heart and new spirit and grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and desire to honor God, living for him in all of our ways. And when we slip, how many people have slipped this week? Raise your hand. Don't you feel more comfortable now? See, when we slip and we grow so slowly, we come before him, Lord, I'm sorry for that. And he cleanses us in Messiah's atonement and helps us to grow a little bit more in his love and life. And so understanding this retribution by our holy God, the redeemed now live to reach out to the unredeemed. If you're here and you have not come to, come to Messiah, I beg you from the bottom of my heart, I beg you that you come to faith in him. Oh, trust in him. Trust in who he is and what he's done for you. Right now he wants to bring new life to your soul. This is why we live, to help others understand what God has for them. And we want to honor him and see him honored in your life too because he's so wonderful. And so we beg you, be reconciled to God. And so understand real quickly, first point, we looked at the external respect for his name. Does your communication and expression of his name reveal that he is Emmanuel, God with us, that he's with you right now? If not, ask him in those areas, ask him to help you grow just a little bit more, to gain greater discipline over your words that in your heart you'll honor him. And so also for the revelation of who he is, growing in that regard, is your heart set apart unto the Lord, set apart unto the Messiah in your heart. And therefore, Messiah is honored in your life and through your life. If there's areas where he's not exalted, ask the Lord to not only forgive you, but help you to grow in those areas. That you'll honor him a little bit more when you get home, when you're at work, wherever you may be. And finally, since we all fall short of the glory of God, let us make sure none fall short of the grace of God. Come to him now. Let your life be renewed, refreshed, cleansed. Have new life in him. Let's pray together. As is our custom at the end of our study, we bring our hearts before God. And maybe there's something that Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, has surfaced. Something's been surfaced in your life. Well, bring, bring that to the Lord. Bring that to the Lord. Uh, remember, guilt is not how you grow. It's by the grace of God. As you now apply grace to that area and grow just a little bit more in that area. So I'm going to close with a simple prayer. If this prayer reflects your heart, the need of your soul, 
Maybe you haven't come to personal faith in them. You've been through ceremonies and religious things, or maybe not. Maybe you've been irreligious your whole life. Oh, that's okay, because God loves you. And right now, he wants to make a difference in your life. If this prayer reflects your need to trust in him, even now, pray this prayer with me. God hears your heart. And if you're already a believer, but there's some areas in your life that you need to grow, let this prayer be a point of rededication, that those areas might be cleansed, and you might grow a bit more into maturity in those areas to honor him. Whatever your need is, God hears your heart. He hears your thoughts. Pray with me. Dear God, forgive me for my thoughtless speech. Forgive me for my nasty verbal habits. Forgive me for not honoring you in all my ways. Thank you for the atonement of Messiah, for the forgiveness of sins, and for new life in Yeshua. Thank you for saving me. And while our hearts are bowed before God, if you're here this morning and you prayed that prayer to place your personal faith in the Messiah, to have him as your, to have forgiveness and new life, to have him to be your Messiah this day, right where you are, while everyone else's eyes are closed in prayer, right where you are, just raise your hand once, right where you're seated so I can pray for you. Just raise your hand just once so I can pray for you, right where you are. Yes, sir. Yes, I see your hands. Yes, absolutely. Just raise your hand once, won't embarrass you, just want to pray for you right where you're seated. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Anyone else, just raise your hand once so I can close in prayer for you. Yes, sir, I see your hand. Father, you see our hands, but you see our hearts. You know us and you love us. Even confirm now to our hearts the truth of your love and the fullness of our new life in Yeshua, the fullness of forgiveness we have, that we may rejoice in your name and proclaim your name in our hearts, in our homes, wherever you have us. Help us to grow together as a family, as a community, as your people. For you are our God. For this we give praise for B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach HaNeinu, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord. Amen.